I welcome Mel to Zibet J's blog. Today's this is about Pastor Jerry Eze. You need to watch this. It's very interesting. Stay blessed. He spoke about his life, how he got born again. Thank you. Kind of impact and your kind of reach and your kind of influence. And uh, most often, in fact, I was where, um, entering into a restaurant. This one I came. And um, a young man walks up to me and I didn't know that. I don't know the young man from anywhere. And then he said to me, oh, I've been praying to God and I've been waiting on God for influence, for influence. And he said, Pastor Jerry, you have it. You have it. I have just sent my wife to go and bring a seat and put it in so that I can get your influence. And he brought the seat. I collected it. And I prayed for him and he left. But then again, the million dollar question is, does that automatically translate to the influence? And that is why this is going to be one of, this series like um, the man of God said, is going to be one of your most prized moments being in this conference. My journey with God, I've been born again for a very long time. I've been born again for a very long time. I've been born again for close to three decades of my life. And I've done ministry for close to 20 decades. Sorry, two decades. Did I say 20 years? Yeah. So I've done ministry for close to two decades. I've been born again for close to three decades. And... Um, that tells you that the journey did not begin today. So whereas every time people look at and they say, oh, that's that guy that we just started hearing about um, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, last year, he's been on a journey. He's been around, but you never heard him. God has been incubating him, but you never saw him. Now, I'm going to categorize what I'm about to say into different, um, all I call it, into different modes. Now, let me begin by how I was molded. I want to begin by talking about my mother. My journey could never be complete without my mother. There are days when I sit back and I say to myself, I wish my mom were to be alive to see who I have become. Now, interestingly, let me, let me, let me fast forward and come back again and so that I can fix it together. Now, when I got a job, we can, I, I grew up in a poor home. The kind of poverty that poor people will tell you that you are poor. That's the kind of home I grew up in. And then, but I, I knew I hated poverty. I knew I didn't, I didn't want to be in that atmosphere of poverty. And then, immediately, I started looking for jobs. In fact, the couple that paid my way through school, I met them in the church. I met them in the church because I was this small boy who comes to church. I sit in church. I'm part of everything the adults are doing. When it's time to read the scriptures, I am the one that reads it. When it's time to... So I was a church rat. And then I met a kind couple in church who now said, you know what? We are going to take care of everything about you, your schooling and all that. And they did that till I graduated from the university. So... When I graduated from the university, and that was my first degree, I got a job, I, did, I, I, I worked in a media house for um, just a few months, and then after that, I got a job with the World Bank Project on HIV and AIDS. Excitedly, I ran to my mom, and I said to my mom, you know how it is, this is a light coming into the home. And I went to my mom, I said to my mom, guess what? That I got a job with World Bank, World Bank not World Bank Estate, the real World Bank, that's where I got a job. My mom wasn't excited. I asked her, I looked at her face, I said, you're not happy that I got a job. My mom replied me, and I'm going to quote her word for word. She said, this job you're getting is not what God told me about you. Now, I want to begin by speaking to parents. Please, I beg of you, don't raise a child you have not gotten the manual from God. 
the child in your house was existing somewhere before he came to you or she came to you. Please, can you be intentional about telling God, can you give me the manual of this child's life? Let me not be asking the child to fill a particular course in the jam, in the jam form of work when he has no business doing that. Train up a child in the way he should go. Sir, before you can train up a child in the way he should go, you must know the way. My mom said, that's not what God told me. Ah! I said, it's not what God told you. For the first time of my life, I felt like my mom was being a witch. I said, in this place that you are in, I told my mom, do you know how much I'm going to be paid? Everything I said fell on deaf ears. She wasn't listening to me. I took my things and walked away from the house. All through the day, what I kept hearing, that's not what God told me. 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 Then after a while, we got used to it. I, we got used to, my mom got used to the fact that I was walking, you know. And then, one day I had a near-death experience on a flight, on a church and give flight that we were at the time. Then, I came back and I was telling my mom, ah, thank God for me, oh, this is what happened, you know. My mom made yet another statement. She said that when a man dies, dislocated from destiny, is the worst kind of death that a person can die. And she said that there is nothing that makes sense than knowing that you are dying in your purpose. My mother. The first one made me walk out. The second one made me cry. And I was looking at, I knew I had a calling for ministry. But I didn't see pastors that inspired me to know that pastors can have money. Every pastor I saw around me are pastors because I knew how much we were. Even though we were poor, my mother, most of the time, the things that our pastor then would need, we were the ones that would give it. In fact, this morning, I, I was speaking to someone about my, 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 my pastor at the time. And then we were just talking. And I told the person, you know what? I'm going to bless my pastor this morning, my pastor at that time. I said, I'm going to bless. He said, okay, I, I didn't know how to tell. I said, no. My past, I'm, I'm going to get to that. I pray I get to that point. But I'm telling you.
is um, cost of band is this one cost of this is there I say God is this what I'm going to end up doing and this is how I resigned my mom blessed me two days after she died almost trying to say I have finally seen the reason why I, I am here and when she said I've kept fasting and praying for you listen until your child first of all the reason why you're not bothered you can't pray is that you don't know the full destiny of your child so when you don't know you don't know what to pray about when you don't know you don't know how to corner the child into destiny and then began my own journey now you can uh, you have a bit of an idea now when i tell you i come from umuaya then you know what it means you know so it's not like lagos it's not like abuja it's not like anything it's not like it's not like where you go and say oh i see this one encouraging me to be this i see that one encouraging me to be this i know let me say this people of god i stand before god and i say the truth let me say in the past 12 years of my life in the past 12 years of my life i cannot remember you don't have to be me but i'm telling you my journey i cannot remember any night that came and became morning that I closed my eyes till morning. For the over past 12 years of my life, everything that people see in the open was built in the secret. And so my prayer altar, people of God, many years ago, this is my pastor that we're talking about. I had an incident in church because, I mean, like I told you, I, I grew up in church and, and I, everything that happened to me happened to me in church. And then they had brought in this mad girl in church. Some of you know the story I'm about to share. This mad girl in church known as Felicia. Felicia had come into church because they, then they put me in the prayer warrior. You know, prayer, that's what they call it at the time. These are prayer warriors. And Felicia, they brought mad girl in my former church. They used to bring a lot of mad, mad people. Mad, mad people from everywhere. And all that. It is not now that people, madness is clothed with good dresses. That you will see madness. You have to prove your ministry with a mad girl. Or a mad, then they will bring serious, demonically looking. You know, and all that. Right now, I think that the demons right now are a bit cosmopolitan. So they know how to hide themselves. But then at the time hey, hey, pastor you know what I'm talking about then at the time the demon was primitive as a, when you meet a demon you know you know you met a demon those were the times when I, I grew up in the church only for them to bring Felicia I think Felicia was designed to attack me anything I did Felicia had a problem Fel, I, I, Felicia's story is a long story but then again let me cut it short now Felicia when they say go and pray for uh, Felicia, everybody will come to pray for Felicia. Once Felicia sees me, Felicia will say, Mad girl, mad girl. She'll be saying, Last born, yeah. Last born, yeah. I say, Felicia will see me and want me to come, want to come and meet me. And she said, there are ashes on your altar. This laid the foundation for what was going to be my prayer life that would birth anything that anybody is seeing. I see a lazy generation who want God, but they don't want the prayer life. I see a generation who are now in a season where they're explaining away prayer. Explain, it's not all about prayer. You have to make you. Who told you that everybody that is praying is senseless? Who told you that because we're praying, we have no more creativity in our heads? And that is, 
No matter how I feel, I must pray. No matter what I think I have done, I must pray. Because the idea is that the devil wants to make sure he disconnects you from a prayer atmosphere. The place that is supposed to fix you is the place that he discourages you from. And this was going to be the beginning of any. I want to say that anything you think you see in my life is born out of a prayer life. Any manifestation of God you see in my life is born out of a prayer life. You don't, I do, you can, I can never joke. Even if it's the, with the last drop of my blood, I will never joke with my prayer life. I love to talk to God. I love to know what God is saying. I love to know how God is navigating. Even before I, I told God, and, and, and I don't like saying some things. And by the time I was praying in the early hours of this morning, and I was just meditating, meditating, thinking about this meeting and I was praying and all that God began to show me what the meeting was going to be like this morning. So when I came I just look left, look right I say, wow God, so this looks like what I saw is an error for a man of the spirit to enter a meeting God has not shown you how do you know that I am supposed to be here how would you know that what you are speaking is what he would want you to speak if you don't have tangible evidences that this is what and so people of God prayer became to summarize the issue of Felicia when I began to pray and got my fire back now my pastor's wife at the time had been praying for Felicia Felicia would run and put none of them Felicia was never seen Felicia never had her sanity returned back but it was when I picked up and got serious with my prayer life that is when Felicia's sanity returned back to her. No matter what happens, no matter what you know, no matter what the systems are in place for you, please don't stop your prayer life. Re-engineer your work with God because the times are becoming really perilous. The seasons are becoming more intense and more wicked than ever before. There are all forms of satanic machinations against your destiny. And so you cannot sit back and say, these things no longer matter. People of God, I can stay on the matter of prayer for if, if there is nothing. Listen, I, I, I want to say this again. There is nothing that has ever happened in my life maybe just a few major things that have ever happened in my life that God did not show me if my wife were to be here I would be asking her major questions even up to her family life even up to the number of children I have even up to the, everything and once I say God said this is what he said ah, 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 ah. And finally we will land at what God said God said this and that and that is going to happen and nothing takes a man of prayer by surprise Nothing takes a man of prayer by someone. Everything about you is ordained by God. Away from this. Let me say this. Anyone that knows me will understand that my journey is a journey of sacrifice. You got to give up everything. You got to give up everything. It's a lie. A fat big lie. When people tell you that, oh, without sacrifice, you will be fine. Permit me to say this. Sacrifice is the bedrock on which greatness is birthed. Sacrifice is the bedrock on which greatness is birthed. And this is exactly what has Abba Shaddai. David was the one who said, I will not offer up anything to God. That will cost me nothing. My staff and I, you would have thought that, oh, Pastor Jerry, at this point, you were, we do, we spend night when it has to be during the COVID season when there was a lockdown. We spent nights and nights in church. We are recording. COVID looked to me like it was my personal project to kick out. So my son and I will sit back and judge. I will stay in meetings with them. And I'm thinking about, in fact, when we were going yesterday, you know, um, 
one of my staff was telling me, he said, Pastor, and then for some reason he was just in and then veered off into what was happening during the COVID. He said, at some point, the way you were talking, the way you were going about it, the way I was just wondering what he said now is making sense. COVID, I hated COVID with a passion. I spoke about COVID like my life depends. Anybody who tries to explain it, I will get in the face. I got worried about people who say, let's close church. Let's close church. Let's use our sense. We were never called to use our senses. Pastors will go on social media, go and they say, say, hey, there's a reason. Let us lock church. You open your mouth and say, let us lock down church. I had a brawl with the government in my state. And then when we're talking, and then the, 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 one of the top government officials cited a pastor in Lagos. I said, didn't you hear what that pastor said? He said, churches should be closed. I said, this is a very trying time for my people. The only place they are looking for is, can you encourage me? Can you, and you are asking me to close church. People of God. The life of sacrifice. When we were in total lockdown, we kept churning out, we kept sacrificing, we kept doing, we kept praying. I'll pray through the night, I'll pray through the morning, I'll pray through this, I'll pray through that, I'll pray everything. I just kept saying, God, something must come out of this, something must come out of this. I'd already tell, told you about sacrifice I make in the place of prayer. You know, I was saying to um, my pastors in a meeting, and I said to them, in this church, in Ahomaya church, I say, right now, that God is blessing me. I say, none of you is qualified to be asking, why should God bless pastor the way he's blessing pastor? I say, in this church, let me show you people. I will point at this. I say, I bought it all by myself. Your one dime did not enter. Church money did not enter. I bought it by myself. I say, see this one? I bought it. So, by the end of the day, I was the highest giver in church. Oh yes. It is easier for them to look at and look at pastor and say, ah, this one is on a private jet. This one is on a, this other one. This one is on the other. You have no idea the kind of sacrifices. You think all the money a pastor gets comes from the congregation. That pastor has no calling. Yes, sir. If everything that the pastor is, is just what these people sitting down here, another all that pastor Lumide is what is all the people that are come here, even if they double you people ten times over. It is only his caller that is responsible for his well-being. And by the time I began to point out. And I just said to them, look at this, look at this, look at this. See, Pastor, eh, in Abali, no, sorry. He means in, um, in English. You are trying, eh? You are trying. And obviously, when they began to see what God was doing, every one of them tried, started trying in their own way. Pastor, don't worry, let me take care of this. Why let me take I said, if you are really taking care of it, you must take care of it very well. Because we just started right now. Because things just started looking up. And this is exactly what it is. There is no, ah, yabaro shiara. Do you know, people of God, every step of the way, you cannot meet me, and the next thing you're not going to think of is sacrifice. Anytime anybody sees me, the thing they tell me is slow down. Slow down. Slow down, because I am a moving train. As I'm sitting back here, sometimes <laughs> in my church, so my staff and I will be recording. And as we're recording, by the time we're done with the recording, everybody, including the cameraman, including the people that are there, they would have slept. Everybody would have slept. And by the time you finish recording, you'll now be telling them, we are finished, oh, we are finished, oh, you people can, people of God, but you keep pushing. You keep pushing. That is the place of sacrifice. My journey has been a journey of sacrificing everything. Now, the good thing about it is that your relationship should look like your vision. The relationships around you must understand 
your purpose. I have intentionally sat from my life people who don't look like my vision. I've intentionally brought into my life people who on, I, I, I am excited. Sometimes I wonder, oh, my wife, if you leave her, I should even triple the things I'm doing. Because if I got married to someone who does not understand, that there is something about like you, you know, you would have been what more than you are if your relationships were understanding of your vision. It's either they align or they get out. It's either they understand or they forget about it. But either which way, your relationship must look like your vision. And around me, whether they are staff, whether they are people, whether they are anybody around me understands that the hallmark of the matter is sacrifice. We sacrifice a lot. People come to work in the morning by 4 p.m., 5 p.m. I send them a message. I say, we've got work tonight. We are doing some work tonight. By the time you know what's happening, when we started having invasion of people coming from everywhere, coming from different places, coming from one day, one of my female staff, so she was coordinating relationships with outside people. So this woman had flown in from wherever, I think it was America or Canada, I've forgotten where the woman flew in from. And then she flew in and then she walks to the woman and then she says to the woman, I'm sorry, um, you don't have appointment with Pastor Jerry and th there is no way you can see him without the appointment. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't know what was happening, but my eyes went where she was talking to do. The woman say, said to her, are you talking to me? And she said, yes. I said, the woman, I said again, are you talking to me? The woman said, do you know the meaning of an idiot? That's who you are. We thought it was a joke. She raised her voice and began to scream. She we began to scream. I said, oh, Roma, what's going on? Come, come, come. What's going on? What's going on? And then she now began to say, eh, eh, I was telling her that uh, she doesn't have an appointment, that there's no way. And I told her that she already has an appointment. By coming, flying down all the way, I say, no problem. We shall include her. But that day, the woman dressed her down, insulted her, different kinds of, but because they understand, in this place, we are here to take insult. Because people's problem have already insulted them. So they are looking for where to go and invest their insult. I say, it's okay. We will absorb the insult. If everything were to be well, they will not pay tickets to come and see us. I say, it's okay. Let us, and I see my people, everyone around me understanding it. The truth is that if you cannot sacrifice, we don't have a meeting point. Our communication cannot be making sense because I'm going to be coming from the place where, you know, we need to go extra mile in this area. We need to go extra mile in that area. We need to go extra mile in that area. Even as at, um, which night was that? I was telling my staff when we are done with the night and I said to them, listen guys, I know, I said, look at how old I was when I went into ministry. I said, look at you people. I know I see a lot of laxity around you people, even at church. I say, greatness will not happen like that. Push beyond. If people say, stop here, don't stop there. Push beyond that place. Never believe. Listen, nature and the universe, they respond to sacrifice. Nature and the universe, I am, I know it like I know my name, they do not just respond to location. They respond to sacrifice. There was a time, the biggest thing I wanted was God to surround me with a network of people. And all, the more you are chasing those people, the more they are running away. The more you are chasing those people, the more you are running away. The more you are chasing, oh yes, I did, I won't lie. There were people I really said, God, if you can connect me with this person, just connect me with this person, I will send them a message, um, uh, it's well and write all those nice things and send them, they will read it, they will ignore you. They will read it, they will ignore you. This week, 
One day, my peer and I were talking. I said, this man, I've been sending him a message. Oh, he cannot, uh, he doesn't want to reply me. And he'll be reading the message and he will not be replying me. We just pray and say, oh, pastor, don't worry. That's the way they are. God, a few days ago, the man had called another pastor and said, please, I want to reach Pastor Jerry. I don't know how to reach Pastor Jerry. And the man called me and he said, there's somebody that said he wants to reach you. He doesn't I say, hey, okay, tell him this week I'm busy. Next week, let him just say, sincerely, I was busy. I was really busy, but I could have made out time. But it's okay, it's okay. At least let me also be unreachable for some time. Do you understand? Yes. And by the time it was time to reach me and all of that, I just said, okay. And then and he calls me and say, oh, man of God, your impact, you don't know your impact in our country. It looks like it is more in our country than in Nigeria. I said, oh, oh, oh are you not aware that a new season has been better upon? Cut the entire long story short, people of God, sacrifice made those that I was running after to start running after me. Listen, you man beings are not exactly very sympathetic when they want value. People don't expect people to sympathize with me. I've been in ministry for seven years. I've been in ministry for eight years. I've been in ministry for 20 years. No, sir. When people are looking for value, when people are looking for value, they look for who is carrying it. And people of God, the place of sacrifice and also the network of relationships around me. I began to be intentional about the people I related with. I began to be intentional about who was in my circle. Make no mistakes about it. Some relationships can be outgrown. The more God begins to do things in your life, there are relationships. You guys are not quarreling. There are no issues. But the truth is that I've outgrown the relationship. You've outgrown it. You cannot sit back. Sometimes your purpose alone tells you the relationship you don't need. And that was exactly my case. Relationships began to change for me. Relationships began to change. Things began to, you know, be modified differently. And maybe because we don't show it a lot. We don't talk about it a lot. You know, one, I mean, my, my closest brother, as it were, you know, is coming this evening. You know, but the truth of the matter is that we came to a point and we realized there is something God is doing. And it has two of us in the picture a whole lot. And we knew that this relationship is what we really need. I push from this angle and he pushes from the other angle and the purpose of God is determined. But when you are in relationships that does not look like your future, you are in relationships that does not look like what God is doing in your life. And not because you want to make them happy. Let them not say, I become proud. Let them not say, I am not arrogant. Let them not say, I know. Even as you are doing for them not to say, they are still saying. So the earlier you make up your mind and tell yourself, listen, relationships I don't need, I don't need them. Let me also say this. You see, in all of these things, Humility. Humility. They say, if you say you are humble, then you are proud. I don't know whether that one is true. But what I know is that the spirit of God had to bring me to a place of humility. I don't know whether, better whether by circumstances or through in, in seeing the vanity of life or maybe in instructions of my heart. I say it all the time to my wife. I say it all the time to my staff. I say it all the time. I say, listen, listen. We should own what we have. What we have should not own us. Because the moment you begin to think about this, think about that, then it begins to own you. And that's the place where your heart begins to puff up. Humility has opened doors. Let me say this. I, I have a problem with the younger generation. I have a problem with the young. A young person wants to talk to you. And oh, I, I, it was, it was, it was Tony Cole, my friend, that was talking to me about um, um, a job. Someone he would have given a job. And then he was just talking and saying, ah, that he planned on giving this person a job only for him to be talking with the person. 
and was just having a chat with the person, you know, what they call chat on the senior management, having a chat with the person and they were walking on the way and all that. Whether the person was very excited, he now put his hand on the shoulder. I have seen a whole lot of pride, haughtiness with young people. Some people are coming to you and they are telling you, Pastor Jerry, I want you to pray for me. What God is doing in my life. What God is doing in my life. <laughs> God told me that what he's doing in your life is not even compared to what he wants to do in my life. And I'm asking myself, so why are you here? If God has already told you that he's going to do better with you than he's doing with me, maybe they are correct. Talking about it is wrong. I see a lot of young people, no humility, no humility. And, all, and a pastor friend of mine was telling me, and he said, Pastor, I preach in church. Every, I don't know how many services he runs. Big church. Big church. And he says, I preach in church these services every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. I preach in church every day. I preach midweek. I preach Sunday. One of my associate pastors, I gave him one chance to preach. The day he preached, he said, Pastor Jerry, I will not lie. He did very well. He did very well. Then from that day that he preached and the entire church clapped for him. His shoulders became like this. There is nothing he says that the guy, that he will even talk about the Bible, that the guy will quote another scripture for him. He will talk about the Bible, quote another scripture. Three months after that, the guy broke out because of the clap that they clap. Three months after he broke out, the church closed. God has taught me to be grateful about, maybe because I grew up in a poor home, some of these things and all that I, I mean they don't they don't hold any water for me at all i don't look at any praise of man and i keep it to my heart i don't look at anything and i keep it to, i know it is better if not that my face has become prominent everywhere sincerely if you when i used to go for programs when i hadn't become this known i go for programs if i come in with my people you probably would think, it's not now that I have a lot of, you know, I intentionally decided to groom a lot of young people. Then my people, big, big protocol, will follow me. And when I, I come to anywhere, they will leave me. And then they will go and uh, be greeting the person I came with, the protocol. Sir, you are welcome. Sir, you are welcome. And then they are the ones that will be telling them, no, 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 it's not me. It's not me. Look at Pastor Jerry. Look at Pastor Jerry. And because I can be calm when I'm not preaching. So when they know, and first of all, when they tell them, look at Pastor Jerry, they will be very disappointed. I want you with Pastor Jerry. I <laughs> But the beautiful part of this thing is that pride will never get you more anointed. Pride will never open more doors for you. Pride will never in any way cause your heavens to open. And God had to deliberately, deliberately, every day of my heart. Pastor. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.